to have a majority in the House. So and you were the Democrat then? You were Speaker Dillon and you yeah. were Senator majority. Bishop? Okay. What was the timeline um, in terms of you know, discussing these issues? How long was the semester? Yeah, the semester, semester long. Um, for the con-con question, I think he gave us about six weeks to discuss whether we want to have a con, con research it, and go through all that type of things. Once we decided we didn't want to have a con, con he wanted us to come up with a, a similar list to what the citizens had done. Um, and that's what we worked in the second half of the semester. Okay. Can I mention one thing, yeah. Senator? Remember, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have an automatic vote in 2010 on whether we have a new con, con. Representative Hildebrand, I don't know if anybody in the Senate has introduced a resolution, but he's got a resolution in to say, we can't wait until 2010. Let's have a vote next year, 2008. So that's really what they were debating. Do we want to move that up? And they decided they, just, they could not get a, a two-thirds majority to put it on the ballot. Can you walk us through some of the issues that uh, were for opening up the contract, opening up the Constitution, and then some of those arguments against? Okay. Uh, it, Madam Chair, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> As I indicated, uh, the Republicans, uh, for the most part, were in favor of a constitutional convention, um, mainly for the issue that I had uh, said earlier, that we felt that once you start looking at so many issues um, in the Constitution, it's worth just having a constitutional convention. Sure, there's costs associated with it, but if it produces a better constitution that results in more effective government for the people of the state, we felt it was worth the, the cost. Uh, we have a lot of issues in Michigan right now, particularly structural, structural reforms in state government, and it may be worth having a constitutional convention. Um, there were several proposals that we discussed. Um, for example, the Democrats under, uh, under Andy were very adamant in uh, the ballot questions, making the requirements uh, more tougher for, for citizens and out-of-state groups to put issues on our ballot, whereas the Republicans were quite happy with the process that we have in Michigan right now. Um, there was some uh, talk in the Republicans about even um, reforms of government doing away with townships. I, I was one of the ones, even though I live in rural Michigan, that supported um, getting away with or some sort of uh, reforms to allow mergers or consolidations of local units of government. We examined everything. Um, we did look at what Citizens for Michigan um, prepared a couple months before we began our project and one of the things that we did in the Senate was, okay, we read the Citizens for Michigan document, but let's start from the beginning and see what we can come up with. And we came up with a lot of ideas that Citizens for Michigan didn't discuss um, for a variety of reasons. And uh, I think in the end it produced a better project because we just didn't take what they did and say that's what we believe. We really came up with our own ideas in some of these areas that I've already mentioned. Was there research paper or something that you had to fill uh, pass in the, uh, Mr. Bill Gallagher? Uh, sort of document that you all put together? Or? There was a, a term paper that students did. Some of them did do it on issues of the project. Others did it on other uh, issues pertaining to Michigan politics. But the big um, aspect of the class was this semester-long project. Every week we met in mock session and met mock caucus. And at the end of the caucus, there, uh, at the end of the semester, rather, it ended up having an actual floor session with, you know, yay and nay votes and how do you view on these issues. And there were probably three or four issues in addition to our two proposals that we came up with that came very close to two-thirds votes. I know Andy and the Democrats had one proposal where they looked at judicial selection versus judicial uh, election, and they really liked what some of the other states are doing. The Republicans didn't really care for that, but they were only maybe one or two votes short of a two-thirds on that issue. So there's a lot of issues here that we believe in Michigan that would be worth probably having a constitutional convention, but it always comes back to the cost argument and whether or not it's worth it for the price. So what did you do when you, you couldn't get enough votes? Just moved on or stayed all weekend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we stayed all, all weekend. Bill has there all night. All right. I mean, I assume you, you went by the same rule. So yeah, the House yeah. representative. So you and the House would keep the board open, and you try to twist arms, or uh, no? Well, the House is pretty. Uh, well, we or we were united on quite a few things. Um, we, I think uh, bipartisan. We came out with about six different um, pr proposals. One of them was reapportionment style, similar to Iowa, where you had uh, more in independent uh, commission that puts together three different proposals, sends them all to the legislature, and then the legislature looks at them. They vote on the one they like the best, and each or both bodies do that, and then the Senate and the governor also can veto or 
or pass it, and that's how it's done. Um, we saw that their districts are much more competitive than ours, especially um, their congressional districts. But uh, I obviously they have much less than us, but um, all of the districts overall were much more competitive, and uh, you saw they actually got a lot more done that way. Um, and the other thing, like uh, I want to touch on what Dennis said, we didn't want to limit uh, or strengthen how hard, how hard it is to get a ballot initiative or a referendum on just the constitutional amendment. That was our, that was the only thing we would change. The rest of it would all stay the same. Um, and then he did talk about judges, and then the recommendation we had was um, appointing Supreme Court judges for eight, eight years, and then they would face a retention election after eight, eight years. Um, that was the other probably most innovative idea, I guess, would be um, for us. Okay. Let me ask you one more question on term limits. Why 20 years? <clears throat> um, well, well, originally it came out of the House at 16 years in either chamber, um, and then after some compromise with the Republicans um, in, in the Senate, we uh, agreed to 20. My personal thoughts is 20 is probably too much. Uh, it's getting too close or too far away. But I know the citizens did 12 in both chambers combining, making it 24 total. I think it's better than what we have now. I think it's best just to leave it at a certain amount of years in each chamber. So if you can gain that expertise in one certain area, you can stay there, you're comfortable, and you don't have to worry about uh, your job in six years and trying to find a new expertise or a new place to, to make your niche. Um, so the 20 years is more of a compromise, but I do fear that that'd be probably tough to sell. Um, Madam Chair, on the term issue, the term limits issue, um, that was actually perhaps the most controversial issue in the class um, that came up and where Andy and I as speaker and majority leader had a lot of compromise, particularly at the, the final couple of days. Um, originally, um, the Senate Republicans and the House Republicans said, we're not going to get rid of term limits. The voters overwhelmingly approved them. They're not going to get rid of them, but we probably can go to the voters and get an extension. Um, the, the first proposal that we came up with was keeping it at three terms for the state house, but increasing the term to four years, and keeping it at two terms for the Senate and increasing it to six years. That didn't float too well with the House Democrats, um, and then we had other proposals um, for 12 years in the state house, but still eight years in the state Senate. And after all the compromise, we finally ended up with the 20 years total with no limitations on which chamber or the combination of terms served. And we felt that was probably the best proposal you're going to get. Um, I know I've seen some polling of late that's reflected 50 to 60 percent of the state would be willing to look at and support some sort of term limit reform, increasing the, the length of terms. Um, and one issue that should be pointed out was I don't believe the Democrats supported this, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the class was pretty unanimously uh, against the idea of a part-time legislature as well, because that's been talked about a lot in Lansing, that, okay, if we increase the terms or do away with them, we're going to go part-time. And as I'm sure you're aware, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Minority Vice Chair, that you guys could vote tomorrow to adjourn session. There's no need to put that in the Constitution. Okay. I think Senator Jacobs has a few questions. Thank you. Okay. I'm very impressed with the thoroughness of uh, your research and, and what you did. And I think that our legislature will take some lessons from you and your ability to compromise. I am very curious about the 20-year uh, term limits. Um, with what's going on in the legislature right now, this crisis that we're in, and the, uh, the, the paralysis that has gripped 